Hello, and welcome to my continuing series of rapid review on the organelles of the cell. Uh, today I'm going to do my last segment on cell organelles, and this segment is on the cytoskeleton. Now, the cytoskeleton is composed of three, uh, three types of fiber or protein products. Uh, the smallest of these is actin filaments, filaments made from the protein actin. Now, actin and myosin are two proteins that associate with each other to have a contractile effect. And you're familiar with this contractile effect in your muscles. So every time you contract a muscle, that is the chemical interaction of these two proteins, actin and myosin, going on at the molecular level inside your muscles. But within cells, cells often also need the means to contract, to be able to move a little bit and respond, especially in the case of single-celled organisms, such as, say, the, the amoeba, which needs to be able to move its whole cellular body to engulf food or to run away from threats. Now, that's microfilaments, what we used to know as microfilaments, what we're now calling actin filaments, and they're about seven nanometers in diameter. Now, a little bit larger than that, perhaps about eight to 15 nanometers in diameter, are the intermediate filaments. And these filaments uh, tend to provide some structure and rigidity to the outside of the nuclear envelope, right? So they, we'll find them just under the surface of that double membrane on the nuclear side. And then also just inside the plasma membrane to provide a little bit of rigidity to certain cells of the plasma membrane. For example, skin cells. Uh, it provides a, a bit of rigidity to the skin cells themselves. And the third kind of component that makes up the cytoskeleton are microtubules. Now, these are made of the protein tubulin, and they literally are made in a tube shape, and then are used for all sorts of purposes, for structure within the cell, as little uh, transport tracks within the cell, along which uh, transport vesicles and organelles are moved uh, by two motor proteins. Now, back when we talked about actin filaments, the motor protein myosin, was associated with actin, but when you talk about tubulin and microtubules, you should associate the motor proteins kinesin and dynein with, uh, with the tubulin tubes. Now these tubulin tubes, they're, they're about 25 nanometers in diameter, so perhaps about three, four times the diameter of the original actin filaments we were talking about, so pretty large. And they come in different arrangements depending on their use. And one of the most interesting uses is in the slide that you're looking at right here, which is a cross-section of cilia. Now, these cilia have an arrangement of microtubules within them. You can see they have an outer membrane, and then there's a matrix material in here, sort of grayish matrix material. And then there's nine pairs of microtubules, and we're looking at this in cross-section, so they've been sliced through, and then two in the middle. So we call that a nine plus two arrangement which is typical of what we find in cilia and in flagella. Cilia work kind of like ores, they beat together, and they're used for feeding and for movement. But uh, flagella work more kind of, they, they flip around, flail around in um, <clears throat> 360 degrees in a circular motion, and they work a little bit more like propellers uh, to, uh, to serve in locomotion. Cilia and flagella are both made with the same structure on the inside, though, and you can see this structure of the tubulin proteins that form these tubes, the individual tubulin proteins in this slide. Here's a cross-section of a cilia, cilium, and then a, a long section of one, and at the base, we have something called a basal body, and that basal body looks a whole lot like a centriole. Now, the centriole also has a nine arrangement, but these nine are triplets of microtubules with nothing in the middle. So nine by two arrangements, very important to know for both cilia and for flagella. This is a picture of human sperm cells. Centrioles are located in animal cells, not found in plant and fung fungi cells, but found in animal cells, and these centrioles Typically when we find them, we find them near the nucleus. They're found in a region known as the centrosome that we know is responsible for organizing all those microtubules. Sometimes we call that region in the centrosome the MTOC, the Microtubule Organizing Center. And when we find them, they look like two little pieces of rigatoni 
that are at 90 degrees to each other. And uh, I'd love to tell you that we're confident on the role of the centriole. We know that it, it is involved in cell division and in forming the mitotic spindle. But we also know that it must not be essential because plant cells and fungal cells don't have them. And yet plant cells and the cells of fungi divide just fine. So the role of centrioles is not completely understood, but uh, as we've already said, we think it, they may be a precursor to uh, cilia and flagella because that basal body uh, at, the, at the very base of cilia and flagella looks so much like centrioles. Here's another view of those centrioles. Found right here, keep in mind that they're triplets, whereas if we find these doublets like this, that's going to be cilia and flagella. Well, that's about it on the cytoskeleton. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and keep posted for more of these videos to come. Thanks for watching.